everybody, it's Kachin Chong here. Good afternoon and welcome to another episode of our Facebook and YouTube tutorial. A very big welcome and I hope you had a fantastic day. So today it's a special episode because we are going to uh, I am I am going to answer answer all the questions from our viewer and also from our community community so it should be an interesting and fun one so thank you so much for watching this episode now whether you are planning to start a family currently trying to conceive or struggle to get pregnant I am here to help you to give you simple actionable step-by-step -step nutrition strategies to bring you one step closer to your pregnancy dream. Now, if you are new to our channel and our community, my name is Catherine Chong and I am the fertility dietitian based in Brisbane, Australia, where I currently consult to two medical practices in Brisbane. I also run my virtual consultation practice where I work with clients one-on-one -on -one around the country. And my job is to help you to prepare your diet and optimize your preconception nutrition to help you to increase the chances of fertility, maximize fertility and to increase the chances of a successful pregnancy. And our, my ultimate goal is to help you to grow a healthy baby. Now, like I said, today episode it's a special one because it's our monthly Q and A Tuesday. Uh, it's no secret that you know you may hear about new research or, or fertility news every day across the news and social media. It can be extremely confusing and overwhelming when you try to figure out what is the best diet to help with fertility and my goal here in fact uh, we are doing this you know monthly q a episode our goal is to help you to gain total clarity so you can move through any roadblocks you have as quickly as possible to maximize your fertility hence uh, what i did was i asked our email subscriber to submit uh, any burning questions that they have so i can break things down for them and to share with you some of the actionable tips uh, to help you to maximize your fertility. So now, if you haven't joined our email list, this is your chance. So what you can do is just head over to my website at kachintong.com.au and you will see um, a, a, a menu or, or it's called to join the free fertility diet challenge. So simply join our five day free diet challenge fertility diet challenge this is how you will get into our community and plus you will get you will get a full five days meal plan from from me and also a day by day a five days coaching email coaching from me to really help you to get started with the fertility diet challenge plus every week you will also receive useful resource uh, to to learn about fertility and pregnancy nutrition so if you are interested please head over my website now kevinchong.com.au slash fertility diet challenge that's where you can find out more information on how to download our free fertility diet challenge and join our amazing community. All right, without any further ado, let's get started with today's episode. First up, we have this beautiful Evelyn asks, I would like to know about diet plan. So I have been having some difficulty in conceiving what should I eat, Catherine, to get pregnant? Now, Evelyn, I am so glad that you are in our community. And I just want to give you the biggest hug I can right now. In fact, you have asked such a smart question. Um, basically, yes, a fertility diet can help to boost your fertility. So nutrition right now for you is incredibly important. I want to share with you a research study. So. As a study of over about 17,000 women <clears throat> found that making just the five simple diet changes can boost fertility by a whopping 
right so there are three things that i want you to start to take action so i suggest number one is you can look at in terms of the quality of the carbohydrate food that you are having so for example uh, carbohydrate food that are high in gi or another term in glycemic index uh, meaning any carbohydrate food like for example um, your rice your bread or pasta any fruits that you have um, or even like if you're thinking about say uh, cakes cookies sweet treats potato things like that if it's higher in gi it means that this type of food can quickly break down during digestion and hence it's more prone to increase your body inflammatory response and may potentially affect the quality of your eggs. So basically, GI or glycemic index is a ranking system from zero to up to a hundred, depending on how much it affects your blood sugar level. So example of high GI foods could be like a, a white bread or or like a white rice, uh, cakes, sweet treats, potatoes or any like say potato fries right just to give you a few examples so what you want to do is to swap with a high GI food to a low GI food options like a multi-grain bread or whole grains like quinoa brown rice roll oats beans and lentils so food like that would help to help you to lower down the GI hence helping you to optimize the quality of egg so step number one is I want to really uh, you to have a look in terms of the quality of the carbs can we modify a few things in your diet now tips number two for you today Evelyn is I also want you to optimize your fat ratio so what I mean is um, I want you to enjoy more of the healthy fats and to cut out all the unhealthy fats especially uh, the trans fat and saturated fat now if you're wondering what are these uh, fats right um, what you can do to uh, to also go to my youtube channel which um, i believe there are some of the previous episode which i discusses more details but just to give you a little bit of example in terms of what are the food that are high in trans fat or saturated fat basically that would include say uh, commonly like deep fried food or if you have excessive like a fatty meats uh, in, in particularly the red meat and processed meat like salami or chocolate biscuits uh, or um, or even if you have uh, say for example like pastry um, products or even dessert things like that so it is more prone to uh, contain higher amount of saturated fat which is unhealthy for you so what i want you to do is also cut down the frequency the intake of this food and think about how you can swap with fertility nourishing fats like the healthy fat especially higher in the omega trees such as the oily fish like salmon tuna or mackerel or even like nuts as a snack uh, avocado and also to use a good quality of cooking oil like extra virgin olive oil uh, in that way you can help to increase uh, the the healthy good fat in your diet at the same time minimize the unhealthy fats for you now Evelyn the last tip that I want you to you know to learn and start to take action is uh, you can also increase more plant protein intake um, as I shared before uh, it's the same researcher a study found that when you have higher intakes of animal protein basically is associated with poorer ovulations and infertility than people who have a higher amount of plant-based protein and what makes it so interesting is by just swapping swapping just 25 gram of animal protein and swap with 25 gram of plant protein right meaning that uh, instead of having like say a, a piece of meat and then you swap with plant protein like lentils chickpeas tofu or bean every day that could help to boost your fertility by 50 percent pretty powerful right so that doesn't mean though you have to exclude all the meat but what i'm suggesting to you is if you are currently you know having more meat based meal i suggest the first step for you is to simply swap maybe one or two meals a week with a plant-based meal or vegetarian meal in that way that could also help to boost your fertility 
right? So I hope this is useful for you, Evelyn. So let me just sum up again. So number one is to lower your glycemic index, your GI, looking at the best quality of carbohydrate food. Secondly, is to optimize your fat ratio by having more of the healthy fats. And thirdly, is to increase your plant protein intake. All right, next up, we have Cassandra. So Cassandra asks, um, I have endometriosis and I could not consume gluten. What should I do, Catherine? Now, first, Cassandra. Um, so basically, um, and, and for, for those of you who are listening right now, if you are not familiar with endometriosis, um, endometriosis is a chronic inflammatory condition um, basically where the tissue uh, the tissue similar to those like the uterus are growing in the other parts of the body usually around the pelvis and can also affect women reproductive health and it's extremely painful condition so one of the key symptoms is definitely the pain especially before or during the period or even during and after sex. Um, a lot of women with endometriosis also experience heavy uh, menstrual bleeding and also a longer bleeding period. So um, many women do suffer from severe abdominal and also the lower back pelvic pain, right? So <clears throat> as endometriosis involves both inflammatory and hormone process, so um, I suppose many women are quite often also look at um, opting for a gluten-free diet, hoping that that could also help to fight the symptoms. Um, but Cassandra, I want you to know that um, in terms of the evidence, the evidence of whether or not gluten-free diet is effective for you, helping to manage endometriosis or even to optimize the fertility, it's really minimal at this stage. Um, there are only a few studies looking at the evidence right now. But having said that, if you have a condition called celiac disease, right? Um, basically, celiac disease uh, means that because it's an autoimmune um, condition, uh, your body sees gluten as, as, an, as an abnormality. Um, so you must meaning that you must follow a strict gluten-free diet if you are diagnosed with celiac disease, right? So Cassandra, my answer is that if you do choose to go on a gluten-free diet and you don't have, uh, say for example, <coughs> celiac um, disease, right? I would suggest you, um, instead of cutting out all the carbohydrate food in your diet, what I want you to do is think about, okay, can I still include some of the healthy uh, gluten-free grains food in your diet? Because uh, study shows that whole grains can actually help to boost your fertility. Because whole grains are naturally rich in antioxidant, B vitamins, vitamin E, uh, magnesium, iron, and fiber. So these are the nutrients that uh, is nourishing for your fertility and your egg health. So I would suggest you can consider uh, natural, natural gluten-free grains like your brown rice, your quinoa, or corn-based food, or buckwheat, or amaranth. So all these food, like I say, they are gluten-free and they are the healthy grains. So in fact, uh, you can actually think about how you can start to include them uh, at your lunch at, and also at your dinner. So that will be a win-win um, situation for you. All right, let's moving on. Next, we have Amy. Um, okay, so Amy asks, I have been trying to get pregnant for four years. Uh, perhaps my weight affects my fertility, right? Okay, all right, Amy, that's a very good question. And I'm so glad that you have reached out to me. Um, I guess that, look, because uh, you haven't really shared much details in terms of weight, so, um, but I just want to highlight to you, Amy, is that yes, weight can affect your fertility. So there are two scenarios here. <laughs> One scenario is uh, if you are underweight or underfed, for example, that could impact your fertility. Now, on the other hand, if you do carry excess body weight or excess body fat, that could also impact your 
fertility, right? So um, just to share with you um, so an example, assuming that um, if you do, you know, carry excess body fat, for example, it, it can potentially affect the ovulation problem and also affects the quality of eggs. Now, if on the other hand, if you do have too little amount of body fat as well, that could also cause ovulations um, problem. Um, one of the common symptoms is you may um, you know, miss your period or your, your, your period may stop and hence um, you are not getting any ovulation um, at all, right? So I guess that weight definitely play a role in terms of your fertility. Uh, and based on my experience working with client one-on-one, what I what I tend to also do for my client is um, quite often, uh, you know, when you go and see the doctors um, or, or even if you measure at home, right, you would know what is your BMI. So basically it's uh, the body mass index looking at um, what is the, the ideal uh, range of body weight you should be in. But quite often I don't just use BMI. Um, as, as an indicator. So what I would do in my practice is I will actually um, perform a body composition analysis to truly understand, to get a clearer picture, what is your level of body fat percentage versus your muscle mass ratio, right? Because BMI is not a, a very accurate indicator. Okay, so for example, um, you may have, you know, you may have, um, or oh, oh, I have seen a client before who have perfect uh, BMI uh, level within the normal range. But having said that, uh, this particular client body fat percentage could be still higher, right? So again, the diet strategies will be different. Uh, that will be help needing to helping her to reduce body fat despite the BMI is perfectly normal, right? So I would suggest, Amy, um, the first step for you is depending on where are you um, at right now. So if you're in Brisbane, that's great. You can DM me and contact me. Um, but otherwise, I would suggest is to, to have a look around any places near you that can uh, do the body composition analysis for you. And the second step, it will be a good idea to also consult a fertility dietitian like myself to help you to work out an, an idea uh, eating plan for you to help to you to optimize your weight or your body fat level if that is making uh, if that's helpful for you amy and you are welcome to dm me if you need any more information all right next up we have julie okay julie asked which nuts are best for fertility? That is such a great question, Julie. Um, okay, so first of all, uh, nuts are wonderful source of nutrient. Um, pretty much I recommend nuts to all my clients. So basically the reason why is nuts um, actually contain at least 28 different types of nutrient and has been linked to uh, reduce like general health, like heart condition, uh, reduce cancer risk, and even type 2 diabetes. But if you're looking at in terms of fertility, right, you really want to be strategic about choosing the types of nuts you should have to help you to boost your fertility. So ideally, you want to choose the type of nuts that contain the highest amount of antioxidant, uh, the healthy good fat, and also vitamin E, okay? So my top picks for you, Julie, are, I would say that my favorite, uh, one of my favorites certainly will be Brazil nuts. Um, just, you know, letting you know that, so roughly about two to three Brazil nuts a day, that could already help you to meet your requirement of selenium, which has its antioxidant properties uh, and play a critical role in reproductive health, your thyroid hormone function, uh, DNA synthesis, and also protect you from the oxidative damage. So I would say Brazil nut definitely will be the top of my list. And let me think, okay, second, my second favorite will be almonds. So basically almonds is another nut that it's very rich in vitamin E, especially uh, vitamin E will be really helpful 
for helping uh, the to maintain the endometrial thickness, especially around um, to help with the improved embryo implantations, right? So um, definitely almonds will be my second pick. And if you ask me to pick another one, I will probably say walnuts. So walnuts is one of the few plant sources of omega-3 fats. Uh, they actually uh, known as the healthy fat, so which has the anti-inflammatory uh, effects uh, with the walnut. So there you have it. So I would say that Brazil nuts, almonds, and also walnuts will be my top three picks for you when it comes to fertility. All right then, our last question for today, it goes to Iris. Okay, so Iris asks, can eating legumes help me to get pregnant? All right, Iris, this is also another really great question and you are not the only one asked me this before. Um, so you may have heard about, okay, legumes can help to boost fertility. In fact, um, it, it, it in fact, you know, if you're looking at the nutrition content, there's no surprise. Legumes are a jam-packed, nutritious food. Um, and let me explain to you why. So basically, um, legumes, right, it actually very high, contains very high amount of B vitamins, um, irons, or even are a good sources of folate, which is essential um, for fertility and also a great source of antioxidant from the plant-based source and they are very low in saturated fat which is the unhealthy fat we talked about earlier on now what actually are legumes so legumes actually um, include like your split peas calanini beans kidney beans baked beans uh, soy beans or adamame beans, chickpea, uh, four beans meat, or even your red, green, and brown lentils, they are actually considered the groups under legumes, right? So how can you enjoy more legume, I suppose, if you're not used to eating legume? So the easiest way for you, I would say you can consider now it's winter in Australia, you can consider adding uh, legumes in one of your favorite vegetable soup recipes or you can try to make the lentils patties uh, instead of the typical meat patties like I say uh, certainly you want to include one or two days a week of vegetarian meal that will be helpful when you're trying to have a baby to boost your fertility or you could also try it out say you know adding like chickpea or other mummy beans to one of your stir fry you could also potentially try to add some beans and lentils in your casserole dish or even let me think okay and also potentially also uh, adding the four bean mix into your salad or uh, you could also snack on the oven roasted chickpeas i think these are the the easiest way that you can enjoy legumes in one of your fa favorite family recipe so there you have it there you have it um iris so i hope that would be helpful for you and I hope that all of you here today listening to today's episode I hope you have learned um, much as well from today tutorial sessions and thank you so much again from all of you here submitting your question today and if you enjoy this episode don't forget to press subscribe uh, button so you will get notified every time we uh, go on live or upload a brand new video and remember if you like this video don't forget to also share with your friends and family and leave a review or comment down below let me know what do you think about today's episode now thank you so much for joining me today and i will see you same time next week same place bye for now everyone